anyway, so here are these piles, and I, I would think, I was going through, finally when I got to the whole book stage, I had five chapbooks. So it had some real success with the chapbooks. They were all published. They were all published with independent presses. And four of them had been published because they won a national chapbook competition. Cool. And, and uh, so, you know, that was really, I felt like I was doing the right thing. So then I'm thinking, but they were so different from each other. And then I thought, okay, time for me to have a book. I'm way overdue having a book by this time, considering how many poems I've written, how many of them have been published. I'm way overdue in the normal course of things. I was trying to get the best 60 poems out of all these piles and let that be the manuscript. And yet, it sounded like it was written by different people. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Subject matter, it was just jarring. It was like an art gallery show where you'd have a black and white photograph right next to an oil painting of a horse right next to a really abstract uh, pastel drawing. Yeah. You know, the whole room like that, you know how that's just, you'd much rather have them work together somehow. Totally. And... All of a sudden, I got this lightning bolt in my head that there was not one book here. There were five. Mm. There were enough pages for five books lying on in piles, you know, on my, I printed them all out, <clears throat> lying in piles around. Once I did that, I could kind of go, you know. Then, uh, the first book was Strict Economy of Fire. Mm -hmm. Which kind of always, it always declared itself as a book. It's from yeah. a wilderness trek in Nepal. I love that book. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and and you probably know, then you noticed, it's in kind of elevated language, slightly elevated language, long vowels. Um, it's real Buddhist. Yes, yeah. I definitely uh, picked up on that. Uh-huh. Um, but it said, you know, in, if you're in a church all, or if you're in a sacred place all over the world, your language is oh, ma, na, na, wa, wa, ma, na, ma, ma, that kind of sound. Mm -hmm. Not the na, na, na part of it, but the, the moon is over the sea. Mm -hmm. Lost vowels where you stretch them out. <clears throat> Whereas, of course, if you're cursing, you go. <laughs> about that long you know, <laughs> vowel is about that long <laughs> you don't use an it typically in uh, that religious language um, and you don't end words with it mm. often it just changes the sound completely and this is kind of that meditative oh, 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 mm -hmm. kind of sound it just amazes me when I read it how how it's kind of pure, isn't it? It, it is. Stays in that place, kind of pure. So that one was. It it took a long time to make it a cohesive manuscript. Okay. However, uh, I always knew this was that these all went together. You, you know? definitely. I mean, I feel like that in all of your books. There's that cohesion that I think it, uh, is very desirable. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. That is so much work. Yeah. That doesn't just happen. And and what took me a long time with that was just making it, you know, finishing the poems and finishing it. What took me a long time with the others was getting them in order, you know, or, or even conceiving an order. Yes. Yeah. Conceiving an order. Let me read you one from Strict Account. Okay, that's great. While we're talking about those long vowels, uh, let me read you. I'll read you one of the poems in here. I like this one. It's called um, The Question Everybody Asks. Okay. So this is from, um, I have come home from Nepal. People ask me that question. The Question Everybody Asks. One, a child's drawing of a mountain an upside-down V is the picture of no real mountain at all. Each untidy fling of feldspar, ice, lava, 
graphs a single history of earth against sky, distinct as hand-scrawled initials. I learned the outline of Himal Chuli from the logo of a second-hand bookstore by the same name in Tamil. Weeks later, when the split peak hove itself across the dirty window of a bus, it slid right under the two-notch curve in my memory, the last interlock puzzle piece, like locating a stranger by a profile, you know, from a dream. Mm -hmm. Two. Yes, I saw Everest twice on the Thai flight from Bangkok to Kathmandu and back. I recognized the plume of smoke, the savage broken cheek, Sagarmatha, its name in Nepali, brow of oceans. Mm. The plane felt too small for me then. I could beat my arms and shrug it off, the tight aluminum of the fuselage splitting along my back like lizard skin. In Tibet painting, Everest is Koma Longma, goddess who wants you to live, riding her snow leopard above shining pink clouds. Passengers pressed to the recessed portholes, open mouths reflected thin black O's in the scratch plastic double pane through our own crowding faces. We saw the first mountain move by, slow, indelible as a star. Hmm. Beautiful. So that has those kind of long, it's a kind of a high thought, you know, elevated thought kind Very. of thing. And it's also a, a, the vowels, I uh, felt it, kind of a really good line. Not those that are in Nepali, because all of their words are like that. Well, a child's drawing of a mountain. Mm -hmm. They sound like curse words, you know. If you were in another, you can tell what people are doing, what people's mood is in another language, even if you don't know it, and even if you can't see their faces, because that consonant vowel thing is always going on. Um like locating a stranger by a profile you know from a dream. It's mm -hmm. got like locating, long O, long O profile, long O, no, long O, no, and dream is mm -hmm. long It's very meditative and it's also like a, almost like a riddle, you know, like it's sort of, I don't know how to say it to describe it other than to say that but it feels very like thoughtful you know mm -hmm. thought provoking mm -hmm. I try not to think it was oxygen deprivation <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so <coughs> may very well <laughs> so yeah. then we talked about that some what would we say